Welcome to Design and Layout with Canva. My name is Dana K. Johnson. I'm the Technical Assistant for the Digital Scholarship Commons at the UVic Libraries, McPherson Library. Today we're going to review a few key design principles, do a quick tour of Canva, and then get started with some practical hands-on activities. So the first thing to consider when you are designing something is that you want to ask yourself, what is the message? Unlike creating art where you are concerned only with what you want to say, um, when you are creating a design, your concern is about your target demographic. So both of these flyers have the potential to attract a lot of customers to the door, but the expectations of these customers will be wildly different. So do not pick a design that's based around your taste. Pick a design based around your message. Um, so the flyer on the left has the message of a sort of bargain basement, sale, sale, sale. Um, you would imagine a lot of inexpensive, cheaply produced, almost dollar store style piles of um, product. And the flyer on the right gives the impression of boutique, high quality, high end product um, that though it's on sale, the expectation is that you're going to see things that are a very high price. So um, if somebody were to walk into a store where um, they received the, the flyer for one and got the opposite, the, the, the disappointment or surprise might um, get a negative reaction. So think about that. Um, if you put your taste on something and the people receiving it um, get the opposite, that can cause some confusion. And this may seem obvious on the surface, but it's a mistake that I've seen a lot of beginners make. So consider that when you're designing. Small changes such as font choice can make a big difference in tone. So if you think about these two signs, um, try to imagine if somebody's voice were reading these to you and what would those voices sound like? Um, I would think in my personal experience, I would imagine the one on the left having an almost posh and polite tone and the other one having a stern and um, more bold tone. And that's the power of a font. And I think of a font almost like a costume change. Um, you think about how much care and attention goes into um, in a TV show or a play, how much goes into costume choices. And when you see an actor come on to a scene, what they're wearing and how their hair is done, their makeup is done, tell you so much about who that character is. The same thing is in one of these letters or the words that a font choice can tell you so much about what that tone of these words are, is trying to get across. And so sometimes when I'm choosing a font, I might step away for a few minutes and come back to it and what does it say? And um, the longer something is going to exist, the more time I spend deliberating over a font choice. If it's going to be a logo that's going to stick around for years, I might spend weeks going over font choices and uh, really, really paying attention to how much that font conveys in the design. When you're creating promo materials, such as a poster or a flyer, it can be really tempting to cram as much information as possible into your project. There can be a fear that people will not get some of the pertinent information, but the problem is that too much information has a backfire effect. It pushes people away by overwhelming them. I've seen some posters made where it almost looks like they've been, I like to say, designed by committee where everybody's had their say in 
but we need to have this in, we need to have my part in, we need to have my, my little section in there as well. And what happens is somebody's walking by a community board and there's 30 posters on there and they just glance over a poster or a flyer and it's just a big wall of text and they don't see the most important information on that, that poster and they walk away without getting any of it. And um, instead, it's important to use what we call hierarchy to get the most important text to stand out. So this example here um, is a poster for a film fest. And so the, the most important information is the title of the event, and it's in big, bold, bright colored letters. And then the next thing that's important is the date and the location, and then it goes down from there. So if somebody's standing in line for coffee or they're just glancing at a community board, they might grab that title in the 10 seconds they're looking at this poster, and that might be the only thing that they get stuck in their minds and before they walk away. And if a few days later, they are walking along and it pops in their head, oh yeah, there's an indie summer film fest in Victoria. And they punch that into a search engine and it brings them to the web page that has the rest of the information. Then that poster's done its job. And it didn't have to have all the information on the poster. It just got the people to the website and then it's done its job, right? So if somebody sees, oh, Andy Summer Film Fest, when is it? Then they've got that information right there. If they're super keen, they can say, oh, there's the website. They can take a quick picture or look it up while they're standing there. Um, take a picture of the poster, look things up later, that sort of thing. Um, but, uh, you don't want to tell them too much out of fear that they'll miss something because then there's a strong chance that they'll forget the most important parts of your message. So you want to distill down to the most important takeaways. And it can be helpful to do that down on paper, write down, if someone only saw one thing, what is the most important thing that you want them to see? And you know, if it's one thing that gets stuck in their mind, what is it that you want stuck in their mind so they can look it up later and, uh, you know, write that down. And then what's the next important thing? Write that down and use that to build the hierarchy for your poster and, uh, and then put that into your, your Canva template. So when choosing your theme, consider the colors in your images. This is something that I see a lot of times when people don't consider the colors in photos as part of the design. You know, they might pick really lovely design colors in the highlights, in the, um, the rest of the layout, and then they forget that pictures are full of color. And this is an excellent example of color harmony across the image and the design elements. Um, what we see here is how they've used the sunflowers to balance out in the opposite corner the name of the person so you might not have noticed the little black triangle behind the name in the upper corner but it's a tiny detail that mimics the black shadow sort of triangle triangular shaped shadows in the bottom two corners and these sort of tie all together, but also that black triangle in the upper corner also serves to highlight the name and help it be more a bit, bit more readable against the lighter background in the top corner. Um, another direction that could have been taken with this is that there are red highlights. Um, there's the, the band in the hat, as well as the red in the camera strap and the little red detail on the camera itself. So this person could have tried doing um, red details. So red border around the outside and red name and see how that feels, you know, and um, or gone with a contrasting color. So uh, a color that 
is a nice contrast in color to both red and yellow that matches with both of those and doesn't clash. So just paying attention to color tones and making sure they don't clash. So using, you know, a terrible neon color, you know, that might look beautiful in another design, but would look really harsh with these um, softer tones is something that you would want to avoid. So when you're designing brochures, um, give your text some breathing room. Brochures often sit between the realm of a poster and flyer or a booklet or website. And you want to decide early on the goal of your brochure. Is it to advertise a service or to provide instructions and information? Something meant to, for advertising may need to be more image-based and less text with eye-catching appeal, um, lots of photos and graphics, and lots of space less text um, rather than something that's used for instructions or menu options which has way more text but even for information brochures trying to switch squish too much text into a small space can be overwhelming for readers and so balance is important so you can see this example is a 3d printing brochure that i created using canva all the examples that i have in this presentation were all made in Canva. So even though there's a fair amount of text in this brochure, I did try to keep a lot of empty space in there as well to give the eye a bit of a break so you're not overwhelmed with too much text. So one tip that I like to provide for people is try to get all of your content first before you start, before you start looking for templates. Um, it's easier to know how many photos and logos and how much blocks of text that you're trying to work with before you start looking at templates and start designing um, rather than finding a template you really love and then trying to fit everything in afterwards. Um, if you find a template and you absolutely love it and it fits three photos and two blocks of text and then you find out afterwards that you need to work with five photos and three blocks of text and suddenly you're trying to you know cram things around and you're fight you're suddenly fighting with this template and it becomes a frustration it ends up being more work and it can work but it might have been easier if you just knew what you were working with in the beginning and it can be a lot of frustration and uh, if you're in a rush if you are you know um, dealing with a group project it can be it can be a lot of a, a lot of frustration um, so yeah if you if you know exactly what you're working with and you can kind of sketch things out see how they balance with each other it can it can save you a lot of grief so that's my little tip from experience for you so what is canva canva is web-based and it works like google docs but for layout with design elements it auto saves your work so you can work across multiple multiple computers and collaborate with teammates canva has a free and a premium tier and this workshop goes over how to utilize the free tools within Canva. Even in the free side of Canva, there are options to use pay-as-you-go elements such as clip art and photos, but they aren't necessary to design excellent work in the software. So like I said, it's, it's like Google Docs, but instead of working with blank documents, it's got preloaded templates. You can start from blank, but you've got mostly um, templates to work with, then why start with blank when you've got great templates? When Canva's done most of the work for you and you can just replace the text with your own text, you can pop in your own pictures and logos, or if you don't have pictures, they've got wonderful catalogs of pictures for you, or you can pull them from other sites and drop them in. It's 
fantastic. And you don't need Photoshop and uh, you don't need graphic design backgrounds to be able to use it. It's a great tool. So you can use the templates within Canva as inspiration, but feel free to change them. The design on the left is a Canva template and the design on the right is the same template that's been altered to suit our uses. So um, I entered the official UBIC colors to change it to match and um, you can get that off the UBIC website and um, it also moved around some of the elements so that it fit um, the way that I wanted it to. Also, as I mentioned along the bottom there, a lot of the clip art can have the colors changed so you don't have to have Photoshop. And it's great because having matching elements reduces clutter and increases visual harmony. And it just looks so much more professional. And so having that as a tool within Canva is fantastic. So you can just find clip art that looks great within your design and then have it match your design and you don't have to be a graphic design expert to be able to do that. So from here, it's the hands-on portion of our workshop. So if you go to bit.ly slash DSC dash Canva, you'll get to the hands-on portion of the workshop. And if you got to this recording, you have already got to that document. So you probably didn't need that. And uh, you can just work your way through the activities. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop us an email and we'll be happy to help you out.